Aswin's uh, first general question after the one we went to earlier is now, when should I consider taking profits for naked put positions? Our general rule of thumb here, and you can see this mentioned in the strategy help page, um, and there's some other, the, the power tips that come up here on the main naked put screen talk about this. Earnings in my target, and I do this with my bull put sometimes too, but the target is about 80 to 85%. If you've achieved 80% of what you expected to make on the naked put position, it's a good idea to take the profit off the table. I, I know there's some investors out there that talk about out of the money bull call debit spreads and even naked cash secured naked put positions that are 30 days out or more, sometimes 60 days out, that they'll take a profit at 50%. That's a different approach. If you're trading weekly naked puts, or even if you're trading, you know, 20 to 30 day out naked puts, our general rule of thumb is the 80% rule. You've achieved 80% of what you'd made on the position early. It's a good idea to close the position out. And as I mentioned, I may do that with some of my bull puts. Uh, earlier in the discussion, asked when you were here, uh, when we were talking in relation to the um, entering the credit spread position and a little bit about the bull puts, uh, I had mentioned that I want to hold it to expiration to get the maximum profit. And that's because I'm using shorter term, two week out, 10 day out positions. If I'm still 3% out of the money going into that last Friday, I'm probably just going to leave in because very rarely do you see that, if ever, do you see that big of a drop. I haven't had it personally, but I know that investors have seen things happen after hours, even on a Friday at expiration where before the market truly you know, shut the gate, all of a sudden something happened right at 401 or 402 and a stock fell. It was Tesla. If you probably remember some of the stories you might have seen on the internet about that from a month or two ago. Maybe it was back in September. In any case, it was a large decline on a Friday night right after the market closed. And some investors who thought they were out of the money on their credit spreads, on their bull puts or even naked puts, ended up getting assigned. And they thought it was going to expire. Um, so it was a little bit interesting in those situations. But very rarely does that happen. But again, it's something to pay attention to. So 80% rule is a good idea when to take profits um, in that case. And in the portfolio, of course, let's just go to a naked put screen. So what I mean by 80%, of course, is that if I sold the put for a dollar and in the next, let's say I sold this uh, lands end deep out of the money put, stocks at 28 or three, we're looking at a 25 puts, more than 10% out of the money, right? Yeah. And it's a 95 cent premium. So we're looking for a 4.5% naked yield. So that's a pretty good position. Let's open this up a little bit here. Let's use our scrubber to get our graph open. There we go. Break even of 2387 with that 95 cent premium, or okay, let's put it back into a dollar. Let's make it just a dollar to be good. All right, there we go. Okay, so I mid it, I'm sorry, so I bid at 95, midpoint is around 112. We're going to keep a dollar here. So it puts my break even right at 24. Pretty easy to see. We sold the 25 strike. So if the stock LE stays at 28 or on Tuesday when the market opens back up again, it starts to go up, starts to go up, it starts to go up a little bit, goes up to 29, let's say 29.15. And the next 10 days, it goes up to 32. That would be great. But what would we look at? We might be able to buy this back for 20 cents. We made 80% of what we expected to make. So I might take that right off the table. And of course, Power Options is great at helping you with that or with other techniques. Now, why would I open this position? You know, I'd open this Land's End position if um, uh, you know, it matched my criteria. The stock is in an uptrend trading above its 20 or 50 day moving average. I had a good probability. And of course, as you mentioned, I was neutral to bullish on the position. And I wouldn't mind owning Land's End if it came down and was assigned to me at 25 long term. Maybe convert it to a married put or one of those standard collar positions we were looking at earlier. But let me add it to the portfolio. And uh, we'll just add it to AG, it uh, doesn't matter here. Um, I could create a new one. Yeah, so if you wanna, if you wanna just start paper trading, just create a new portfolio, and we'll call it My Paper Trades. And that's the easiest thing to show here on the trial. There you go. And it'll start you off with just an account of $100,000. And to keep the math simple from the profit and loss chart, I could have linked this to the portfolio from the, um, search tool as well we're going to put a quantity of one price of one today no commission fee because this is a paper trade this is going to be my naked put the portfolio is going to tell me that so we're tracking one short put position 
and I've got my data. Now we have this alerts column for you. What the alerts allows us to do is set up different warnings of when we might consider the position. Okay, so we'll go into view. What did we do? We sold the 25 strike. So this is going into your second question. When to cut losses, even though I assume that I don't mind holding the stock? Well, there, there's two things there. Okay, so I sold the stock at 25. For my bull puts, what I typically use, it's a mental alert, not a, an immediate stop that I set with my broker. But if the stock reaches within 1% of my short put strike price, I may consider rolling or adjusting the position. Same with the bull put credit spread. So my strike's 25. I might set a warning to be notified if the stock hits 2525. I'll mark that as red. We can set it on the stock percent change and ask price for the option, the days remaining to expiration if you need to be notified of that, or the percent position change. So the system knows you sold this as a put, that you have a dollar premium taken in. It knows the current buyback cost. So I'm going to tell the system if I make at least 80% on the position, hey, let's mark that at green. That's a win for us. I want to be notified because I've got buy to close this position if I've made 80% of what I expected to make on this position. Now, market trends are market trends. I likely opened this position. Uh, this was a 35-day out position, so I probably would have looked for a stock trading above the 50-day moving average. I may also want to be notified if the stock drops below, in this case, the SMA 50. It reverses the trend that I wanted. And I would know this ahead of time before I open the position because I'm probably not opening a bull put credit spread or a naked put position if I have earnings between now and expiration. But if I'm in a longer term married put, I may want to be notified if I'm within four or five days to the earnings. Now I'll just mark that as a neutral. That's a yellow. Oh, this is a red. Sorry, that's a warning here. Again, a mental warning, not a hard stop set with my broker. On the bull put credit spread, I might look for the decrease of 50%. Uh, uh, trade moves 50% against me. Okay, so now I've got my limits in there and stocks at 28.03. I'm going to put in an upper positive limit at 28 just so you can see how it appears. All right, so let's go ahead and save those alerts. There we go. And now you see my upper alert has been triggered. I just set that. So if my lower limit is triggered, when I log onto the portfolio in the morning, I can see my green and red alerts. If any of them have been triggered, I had two of them triggered this morning. <laughs> With the market activity, I expected that to happen. I was planned for it, um, planning for it. I already knew which adjustments I was going to make. But so it notifies you. And then once you're notified that an alert has been triggered, you want to go to position actions and then position analysis. This gives you that breakdown of your current position. And it may show you potential rollout opportunities where all the math is done for you for the new potential return if you decided to roll or adjust the trade now that the stock has moved against you in that scenario. Okay, so that shows you two things. You know, we talked about taking profits, the 80% rule. We set that into our alerts. I set the lower limit of when I might consider to roll or adjust the position or potentially get out to cut further losses if it continues down. Because you had asked when to cut losses, assuming that I don't mind owning holding the stock. Okay, well, this is why I have the trigger here in that 1% rule. If it hits there, I might want to consider buying to close my February 25 put. This might be two or three weeks from now. And then maybe rolling down to the March 22 and a half or the March 20 strike if it's available, depending on what the prices are. And again, depending on where the stock is. But I might want to be, I probably want to be notified before it goes in the money, Aswin, before it goes below my short put strike. So I have the potential to evaluate what adjustments I might want to do. Rolling down to that 22 and a half put, maybe the 20 put, depending on the decline. Okay, It might get near that 1% rule and not trigger it. And the next day it opens below 25 and I'm at a full larger loss on the position. Okay, that's something to consider. Now, another general approach. Okay, so we, what do we talk about this? When to consider closing. I should do it down by the graph. My apologies, Aswin. Okay, there we go. So we've sold the 25 strike, and you saw we set my alert to be notified if the stock falls to 25.25. That's my 1% rule for naked puts. If I'm trying to do in the money covered calls to be assigned, which have the similar risk reward profile, that's my 1% rule. Okay. 
Stocks at 2803. Another rule you might consider is the same thing that you might do a general approach used by IBD and, of course, other uh, stock investors, stock selectors, stock educators, is a 7% decline. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Well, not 7% from your short put strike price, although we're still protected down to 24. Remember, that's our break even. We're not losing money until the stock goes below 24. But if you're worried about a change in market, worried that you picked the wrong stock or had the wrong timing, and this is now in a downtrend, if the stock falls 7% from the price of when you initially entered it, you might want to consider that as well. Standard IBD approach, if you're long a stock position, remember the potential outcome here is we could be long the stock, okay? That might be considered, okay? So that 7% decline on the stock from when you entered the position. I'm mentioning this for other investors who might be watching this looking for naked put positions. I don't think this one applies to US Win because you said you didn't mind potentially owning the stock. So where's the cutoff now? You might want to consider 7% below your short put strike. Because remember, even just you know one point down from 24, 4.5, about 5% down, that's still your break even. I'm sorry, 1% below one point below, excuse me, your short strike of 25 on this naked put position. Okay, so that's about 4, 4.5% down. And you're still at break even. So maybe 7% below your short put strike price because it's already dropped more than 10%. This is almost a 17%, 18% decline, isn't it? Down below 24. It's not going the right direction. I knock on wood, that was me. Yes, I have a stock that's down 15% in my first 20 days of opening a trade, but I'm in a married put. I could close it right now for a 4% loss. I'm looking for an opening to manage it. But if you're looking to hold the stock long term, you're getting a decent price. Even if it's down to 23, remember, you're only paying technically $24. Yes, you're paying 25, but you're keeping that $1 premium. So that's still good. But Maybe 7% below the short put strike price is something to consider that when you'd want to get out to stop further losses, because if you get put the stock and it keeps going down, now you're going to have to try to figure out, do you want to hedge it with a covered call trade? Do you want to stop the bleeding by buying a put, which might mean you've already locked in the 7% loss of this difference plus 3, 4, 5% you pay in time value for the protective put that's out of the money. So you're still down 10, 12%. When does it stop? Okay. Don't want to let these losses go too far against you. That's one of the reasons why we use the married put so that any position we enter typically won't have more than a 6 or 7 or 5% loss on the position guaranteed. So I can take a 5% loss and only need a 5.3% gain on my next position to get back to break even. That's not the goal. The goal is to win more often, of course. But if I take a 15% loss, this is where the math starts working against you you need closer to a 27% gain to get back to break even. If I take a 25% loss on a position, I just let it go against me. I now need a 33% gain on what I have left to get back to the monetary value I started with. That's the slippery slope of gambler's ruin that we try to avoid with the collars and the married put positions in this case. But those are some ideas. The 1% rule to when you might want to consider rolling or adjusting this position the idea, of course, of exiting to prevent further losses, if maybe it falls not 7% necessarily below your stock price, but that is an indication it's going the wrong direction for your strategy sentiments, but maybe 7% below your sold put strike price might be a key to just get out to this one might continue to be the one that drops another 10, 15% and drops 27% in the first two months. Maybe that would be a better time to sell a naked put when volatility is high and it's hit a bottom course, you don't know that. I mean, we do everything we can. I'm the same way. I look, going back to the bull puts, as we, which is a similar structure here, I look for bull puts that have the same stock technicals, fundamentals, have the probability I want, and the net credit I'm looking for. I'm going back to the bull put thing. And you know that would be buying a put here, but still, I'm looking for a stock that's neutral bullish. And the success rate, is around 84% of the time. Some years it's 90%, some years it's 83%. I think on average, it's like 86% over the three or four years, four or five years now that I've really been actively testing and doing this strategy, okay? What's different? It, it just is. Some news comes out. 
this, these stocks had the same trends, had the same MACD, had the same technicals, same fundamentals, three or four positions I opened, one of the four might go against me in a cycle. Why? Just, it does. Sector sentiment changed. The sector itself became weak. The CEO did something. He posted something on Twitter he shouldn't have or she shouldn't have uh, in, in those cases. And the stock falls. It, it's just the way the market is. The idea is to stop the loss. In the bull puts, I have to stop the loss at 50% because if I allow it to go to a 60 or 70% loss, I'm not going to be meeting my targets with my return, even keeping the same success rate. So yes, you want to have a trading plan. And depending on what premium you collected, and if you're weekly, of course, or monthly, where do you want to set that stop to avoid for the losses? When is it just time to cut out? That's going to come back to you a little bit too, and your risk tolerance and your risk preference. And uh, last question that you would ask here, it's, is my understanding correct that a naked put position that's one cent in the money will be exercised? That is correct. Okay. So what happens at expiration on February 19th? Is that our standard expiration? Yes, February 19th. If I just leave this position alone, turn a blind eye to it, and all of a sudden on February 19th at 4.01 p.m., the market closes and my stock is at 24.99. Will I be owning 100 shares of Land's End for $25 on Monday? The answer is yes. Any option that is one cent in the money will be cleared out by the Options Clearing Council on Saturday or on Friday. Weeklies usually get cleared out on Friday. Monthly standard expirations like today usually get cleared out on Saturday. It's my understanding. They might have changed that um, now that the weekly options have come about more and everything is actually handled on Friday. But a couple of years ago, that was the standard. That the third Friday, they are technically cleared out on Saturday or by Saturday. But with the weekly options, they're typically taken care of Friday by 5 or 6 p.m. when they're officially cleared out. What does this mean? So there's this, uh, the OCC, the Options Clearing Council, will come in and, of course, to promote liquidity, they're going to exercise and assign any, or they're going to assign any sold options that are one cent in the money or more. And if I had bought this put, I bought this 25 put on LE, and you know I bought an out of the money put, and the stock had started to move move down in this case. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way. The stock started to move down. Well, it didn't go below 25 as I was expecting. So I said, oh, you know what? I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to worry about it. It's it's right around 25. It'll I have lost 100 percent on it. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to buy it back. Well, if it's at 24.99, what happens? You get assigned shares of stock, and you own 100 shares of stock on Monday. Where do they come from? Well, if I forgot about it, and didn't close it, I bought a put that's in the money by one cent that I didn't close early because I was already near max loss. So double whammy. I am now short 100 shares of stock in my account come Monday morning at $25, okay? And then of course the cost I paid for it is factored into that cost and that break even as well. So you're absolutely correct. To promote liquidity, they will act any unclosed options, okay, any options that were not bought to close, sold to close, rolled or adjusted, they're one cent in the money or more, will be assigned if you sold them, will be exercised if you bought them and forgot about it and <laughs> didn't handle it then in that case. Okay. 